Good morning and happy Sunday. Uh, I'm glad to see you watching my video again, and I hope it's one of the last times as things start to open up again, but it, it's probably going to be slow, so be patient. I know it's hard for me, um, but when we meet up again, it'll be worth the wait, um, as we're going to have fantastic fun. I have all these activities that I am planning for you guys. Um, <laughs> so today we are going to, um, real quick actually, we're going to learn why we celebrate Memorial Day and not only are we going to remember our own country's heroes, but we can remember heroes of the Bible uh, that are seldom heard of or even um, taught on um, because they were um, they were humble. So they weren't they weren't great kings or anything like that. They uh, they were great through their actions. So uh, why do we celebrate Memorial Day? We celebrate Memorial Day in our country to remember our country's heroes. The men and the women who have fought, who have sacrificed, given their uh, their own living up for the good of the country, for the people of the country, for our freedoms. And some of these men and women have died in battle. Some still live today, but we remember them and we respect them. We honor them just like we learn about honor, honoring our mothers and fathers for what they've given up for us. We remember our country's heroes for what they have given up for us. So, um, a person, a hero in the Bible um, that we're going to learn about today, his name is Jonathan, and it actually connects to last week's lesson. Jonathan was David's best friend. So, who is Jonathan exactly? Jonathan was King Saul's son, uh, which is uh, crazy to think of because uh, you're like, wait a second, David becomes king. How does he become king if Jonathan is Saul's son? Because typically the son of the king is next in line for the crown. That did not happen this way. So David was anointed by God, which meant God had plans for David to become king to work out God's ultimate plan. Jonathan recognized this and he was not jealous. So that was kind of like the start to his heroism and true friendship to David. Um, I think Jonathan uh, is a role model for many reasons. We're going to learn about those reasons in a second. Real quick, I want to give you a fun fact. The name Jonathan means the Lord gives. And he truly was a gift. Not only was he a gift to David in um, helping God's plan on roll, uh, roll out, um, he was a gift to Israel because he was truly a. He in First Samuel we uh, we get introduced to Jonathan in First Samuel thirteen, but you can read on because this guy's this guy's fantastic. He's uh, he's humble, first off, but um, he was a true hero. He recognized the need of the people, and he recognized that God's plan needed to roll out. So why what, why was he a hero and a great friend? So I started off with jealousy. He was not jealous, but um, sacrifice also. He stepped aside. He sacrificed the crown for David and for God, for Israel. Um, also, he he did end up going against his father because his father actually started to become jealous of David and vowed to kill David. And Jonathan helps David out. He uh, puts um, David before himself to save his life and to, to save the crown. Um, and also he was, uh, he gave up, it describes when, uh, he, when the Bible describes her friendship, it says that Jonathan loved David as his own soul, uh, which is pretty big. Um, and he gave up his armor, which is another big thing. Um, it's not... Uh, sorry, I have to read up on it. Um, it's not on the top of my head right now. Um, it's, a, it's a big act for him to give up his armor to David. So, um, I... Definitely encourage you to read more on it, but I'm going to read a couple of parts in this article I found, which is beautiful, ble beautifully written. <laughs> I'm referencing Ruth Rosin. Um, she recognized Jonathan as a true biblical hero and a great role model. Um, but Ruth, sorry, I gotta find the part I accidentally scrolled up. Um, so. 
Uh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I, w I did want to touch up that um, he also demonstrates love. And um, she actually wrote here, Love is not an exchange, it is a sacrifice. Even when love is mutual, as it was between Jonathan and David, one partly normally ends up giving more than the other. And it might be a little more, and it might be a lot more, but the person who gives more isn't keeping score. We might mistake the one who gives more in a relationship as weak, but those who decide how much they want to give and to whom, regardless of what they receive back, is anything but. Such people are strong, decisive, and what's more, they are showing us how God loves. So he's a great reflection of God in so many ways. Uh, God gives what he wills to give, and he doesn't keep score, and Jonathan is a fantastic model of this. Model of this. Um, sorry, I'm looking again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so I did touch up that Jonathan was humble. Humility is such a mus misused word and misunderstood quality. It does not mean underestimating one's true value or being unaware of one's gifts and strengths. Remember what Jonathan's name means? The Lord gives. Jonathan lived his life that way, with the understanding that everything he had had been given to him by the Lord. And that's why he could be so generous. That's why he could step aside for the Lord's anointed. There is so much to um, take from this if we look at Jonathan as a role model. The greatest thing about Jonathan that Ruth Rosen mentions is that he was willing to step aside to make room for the one who is greater for David. So I would like you to think what you can give, what can you risk to make way for God's anointed or for God's plan. He was great in that, you know, he could have been jealous. He could have gotten in the way. He could have went by his father and tried to kill David for the crown. Uh, he, he, he had it lined up for him, directly lined, but he didn't. He stepped away. He made it happen. Uh, he lived his entire life like this. He did that for the people, for God, for David. He protected David, and he was a true friend. Um, so I would like you to take a look at the passage I had given. Um, I know a lot of the things I said are repetitive, but I'm trying to emphasize um, why this makes him a hero, and why it can make you, or how it can make you a hero, and um, people around you. As you recognize people today, you can be like, wow, that's like Jonathan. You know, a lot of godly people are like this, too, uh, that you can think of. Uh, and remember. Um, so I would like to go into the sciencey part of the lesson. It's not really a big thing on science. It's just uh, actually, if anything, a contradiction of, quote, science or what normally happens in the natural world. We are going to learn about um, unlikely friendship. And I think this goes along with the story of Jonathan and David, because you would think um, if you're next in line and there's this guy that came along, uh, he was a champion and a great musician, you would be jealous, or you would think that you would have to be jealous, but you don't have to. So it was an unlikely friendship with Jonathan and David. We're going to learn about one in the world um, that's happened, uh, I think it was 2014, I'm not positive on that. There is an unlikely friendship between a bear and a wolf. The reason why this is unlikely is because the bear, which was male by the way, bears are solitary, which means they they work for themselves, they work alone, they're uh, very tutorial, protective over their own young, their food, um, they're, they're a hunter, they don't want to share. The wolf works with a pack, and this wolf was a, by herself, it was a female. Um, wolves work together with their own kind, and they're very competitive. So the reason why it's unlikely is these two hunters 
shared. They shared time together. They would uh, be together with a portion of the day with no aggressive behavior. And they shared their food, which is a big thing in the animal world. Uh, it's very uncommon for different species to share their food. Typically, especially among predators, they get very aggressive over their food. It's like, my food, you can't have any. And they'll actually fight the other animal for this food. Uh, so I just take a look at these friendships. Like, this is how you can become a friend. Just reach out to people in unlikely ways. Um, rather than being, uh, be selfless. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, don't be jealous. Jealous wrecks things. Uh, be a friend through courage. Uh, do things that you know um, without God you cannot do by yourself. Um, have faith in God. What he has in store for you is a part of his big plan. Um, I'm sorry if uh, yet again I kind of I stumble a lot and uh, I seem unprepared. Um, I really hope this uh, lesson reaches out to you like it did to me because honestly this morning I was like what do I teach on I know I wanted it to be a, you know kind of alongside Memorial Day why remember people um, and I think you know Jonathan is a great example of this I mean there's many people in the Bible but Jonathan's a great example of this because not only was he a big part of God's plan he was um, he was people who put others before himself and um and created a friendship. So, I hope you guys are doing well. I encourage you to enjoy the day with your family and be a true friend from a safe distance, of course. Um, you can be a true friend to your family, too. Like, my brother is one of my best friends. Uh, lately, I've had spent so much time with him. And I've had to learn selfless deeds during this time because uh, we're living two different lives right now in the same household. And we gotta come to realize that, you know, it's not all about us. It's not all about myself. We're helping each other out through this. So, have a good day. Hope you learned a lot today. <laughs> Bye.